We're joined today by our great friend of the show, Shane Rogers of Shanefully Delicious. Shane, it is always awesome to see you. Thank you for welcoming us into your kitchen. It's great to be here virtually. We have, we have an exciting creation today. I know you are a huge fan of these. I love them to pieces. We're talking, and you've, you've dropped one off, so I have some quality control to do here with you. Charcuterie. Oh, I just lost a tomato. This is exciting. <laughs> Tell me. Well, that's what it's about. It's about being casual. We're casual. We're uh -huh. being those fancy things. And, and a charcuterie board sounds fancy, but it doesn't have to be fancy. It can be your favorite things out of your garden, out of your refrigerator. And certainly, um, you know, who's going to turn down prosciutto? I'm not. I will never turn it down. In fact, I have lots of that today. Um, and if you get some, typically it comes with... Um, the slices of wax paper or parchment between it, and that's great because it lets you peel it right off. Um, and just kind of get into this. It's totally simple and casual and don't think too much about it. I like to kind of tear them apart a little bit so that, um, you know, a whole piece of prosciutto is a lot for a bite. So you want to kind of pull these apart and um, make them more kind of shareable friendly. Um, the other thing I want you to think about is your favorite thing. Go ahead. What do you got to say? I was going to say, in looking at this again, like, you get the idea. We've called it this fancy name, charcuterie, which takes, I feel like, a lifetime to even wrap your mind around. But in, in layman's terms, it's a meat and cheese board. It's meat and cheese it's some, with some cured, mm -hmm. uh, if you have some uh, pickled mushrooms or, or even just pickles. We've got gherkins on there. Yeah, I've got one right here. Tomatoes mm -hmm. out of the garden. Totally awesome. Um, and then pick your favorite cheeses because it can be as fancy as some kind of cheese that you can't even pronounce, or it can be brie. I've got a half a block of brie right here. I'm going to pop that on. Um, I've got some Irish cheddar, which I'm going to break up into chunks because it's kind of cool and it's super aged and chunky, but use what you like. Like if, and, and I would challenge you though, to maybe go out and buy one cheese to put on here that maybe you've never had before. Or maybe you tried it before and you're just not sure if you like it or not. But I like the big chunks of cheese. The other thing is think about the salami or the other, like I've got some um, capicola here. It's really spicy. And that kind of can be along with, and you can kind of, you know, you can lay these out or you can um, kind of twist them up a little bit. I've got some skewers. But give a good balance, some spicy stuff, some salty stuff. Um, but if you like it all spicy, it can all be spicy. I've got some pepper, um, peppered salami, which is really good. And you also brought, uh, and for quality control, you mentioned those skewers. Ah. This becomes really a super easy thing to have on hand for entertaining, especially in these kind of socially distanced times with you know folks coming, you're hanging out outside, mm -hmm. um, you're, you know, your pod of people hanging out outside. These things can be at the ready. You put together a charcuterie board, set this out, and it's very easy for everyone to take a, take a skewer and stab a little bit and then kind of go and enjoy. That's why I brought you the long skewers, mm -hmm. so you can be socially dis distant. Mm -hmm. But I have a selection of those. I have some of these that I really like. Um, these are the ones that I love. The bamboo ones are amazing. I think they're beautiful, and they do make those longer too. Um, but I'm just going to pop some pickles on here. I've got some walnuts too. We haven't really talked about nuts, almonds or walnuts, whatever you like, whatever you have on hand. Like we're kind of in these days where we don't run to the store as quickly as we used to. And this is a great way to use what you have on hand and kind of keep it. And I kind of think if you have it on hand, you probably really like it. If you don't have it on hand and you're running out, it might be something special that you're getting because you know one of your guests likes or something like that. But yeah, we're going to pop some of these on there. Think about color. That's why these tomatoes are awesome. Um, and I know you have tomatoes from your garden. That would be off. These are not from my garden. These are from mm -hmm. um, but They're around here somewhere in this kitchen. Right. I think within, within arm's reach. reach. I don't think yes, it's true. Just on the sort of at the ready. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And the other thing, so I have brie, and I have some Irish cheddar, and I have some goat cheese. And they're kind of all like one, the two of them are kind of super soft cheeses, but they're different flavor profiles. And then the cheddar is really kind of almost crystally and super aged. I'm gonna pop that on here. And when we're talking about the cheeses, we need to think about cheese knives. Make sure that you have at least one cheese knife out for each um, 
different kind of cheese. You don't want to mess up the cheese with the old flavor of the other cheese. Um, so that's just it. You I'm brought us, again, a selection here of I'm easy to use. I'm honestly not sure what any of those are specifically for, mm -hmm. but just put them out um, and let everybody kind of not mix the cheeses so that you don't taste the brie with the goat cheese. The other thing I'm going to um, encourage you to do is put some fruit on here. Fruit is kind of that opposite of the fat and the salt that's in the meat. Um, I got really lucky because if you can see, this one has a cute pure garlic you on it. I'm going to leave that alone <laughs> and put it right here. But you can well, Shane, as we wrap up though, you put your finishing, putting the finishing touches. This is a great opportunity to go with what you know, put out the meats and cheeses that you enjoy, and maybe as you, uh, you know, begin experimenting with putting one of these together, then begin to use some new to use with some old favorites. And I guess in the fall, as this plan evolves, maybe some dried fruits and things yeah. of that nature. And a little bit of honey. I know you love honey. You could put a little honey or a little bit of, I've got mustard to put out with this. Um, but I know you love honey. You could put honey over the whole thing or just a little sweet little bowl right next to it with some honey in there that you could kind of drizzle on um, some of that really aged cheddar. Yeah. Um, so think about accoutrement. Think about things you have in your house already. Think about things you love. Well, I wish I had one of these all the time. Thank you for introducing us again to the charcuterie board or meat and cheese if we're going plain and simple. That's fine. We're simple. Good to see you, Shane. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. And we'll be sure to include a link to more information so that you can learn more about creating and assembling the most beautiful charcuterie board and connecting with Shanefully Delicious and Shane Rogers. Visit WTBR.com slash VTM.